The Jurassic World Dominion trailer shows us many exciting things that are new to the franchise. What does this mean for Jurassic World Evolution 2? Feathers, new creatures, new locations, new mechanics, and baby dinosaurs? Based on the trailer, we can start to build the Dominion DLC. A DLC that should not just give us extra content, but also fill some important gaps in the genome of the base game. Hello everyone, welcome to the video, thanks for checking it out. There are a great many reasons to be hyped about Jurassic World Dominion, and one of those reasons is the impact it will have on Jurassic World Evolution 2. The extent of that impact is what I want to delve into in this video. It's speculative meets wishlist. There are some things we need and some things we really, really, really want. I'm going to get right into it. If you are a Jurassic fan and you're not subscribed yet, please consider hitting that button for content on the upcoming movie and of course the game. The most necessary addition to the game that a Dominion DLC should bring is the extension of the campaign. The campaign currently shows painful signs of having been cut short, allegedly because it would otherwise contain spoilers for the movie. Movie. Given that the campaign of the first Jurassic World Evolution game took me about 20 hours to complete, and the campaign of the second only 4 hours while even dragging my feet, I think we can expect like another 10 to 15 hours of gameplay to be added, as I would assume and hope that they would approximate the length of the first campaign, holding that as some sort of standard. What the story of the campaign is going to be like, I could only guess at at this point, but for now I'd say a few more parks in other locations, and then to the secret location from the trailer. This would mean extra maps for the game, possibly as many as three. I could see a map with permanent snow, a map for the warm Mediterranean, and a map that approximates the location of the secret facility from the trailer, with it being very possible that this facility is a building just outside the boundary of the map, similar to structures that they've had outside the maps in Pennsylvania, Sorna, and the city of San Diego. I did make a trailer analysis video where I sort of predict the plot of the film, and I feel like I might have gotten pretty close. If you are interested in that, it is linked at the end of this video, but I won't get Get too much into making inferences for the game here, because then I'd be making estimations of the plot of the game's campaign based on my estimations of the plot of the movie, and the whole thing just becomes way too shaky. It would also be very cool if the addition to the campaign would include some line work, some dialogue from Sam Neill as Alan Grant and Laura Dern as Ellie Sadler. I thought for a second that maybe they could add to the campaign in a free update and have it coincide with a paid DLC with new Dominion content, like a Dominion pack with dinosaurs. This is a sound strategy in the sense that such a big update would draw attention from your entire player base, getting them excited about your game again, which makes them that much more willing to spend more money on it. Unfortunately, as much as I want the campaign extension to be free, I don't think it would work, because then the additional Dominion content, which I'll talk about in a second, can't be in the campaign, because you have to design the campaign in a way that people can play it without having to buy that extra content. So really, it would either have to be all for free, or all part of one big paid DLC. I've discussed all of this in a previous video, so I don't think there's a need to get into that again. Let's instead move on to the dinosaurs we can expect to be added in a Dominion DLC. The dinosaurs, or creatures I should say, we can separate into a couple of categories. We'll presumably have brand new creatures and new models, some from the trailer, some from the prologue, and some from older species reveals. And we can fill in this table as follows. Now this is a very impressive list of new creatures, so much so that it might be too good to be true. And I guess that we actually wouldn't be getting a remodel for the Iguanodon and the Dreadnoughtus, because I'm assuming their, their screen time is going to be absolutely minimal, and we're possibly also not getting a remodel for the Allosaurus, simply because we've seen this model of the Allosaurus before in Battle at Big Rock, and both the first and the second game didn't do anything with that. I suppose it depends on how much screen time the 
Allosaurus will get. If it's just this clip in Malta, I would say we are stuck with our current game model. The more screen time it has, the bigger the odds of the remodel being included in the DLC. But given just how many dinosaurs are already known to be featured in the film, I wonder how much time there will even be left for the Allosaurus. If I were to narrow it down, this would be my safe bet, which is still a very nice addition to the game. Dimetrodon and Lysosaurus would be the first non-dinosaur terrestrial inclusions in the game, which would be a pretty big deal and push the door open just a teeny, teeny tiny bit for future DLCs with more non-dinosaur land creatures. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Pyroraptor, Therizinosaurus, Quetzalcoatlus, and Oviraptor are all featured in Dominion with feathers. A first for the franchise and an exciting new direction for the game as well, with a lot of possibilities. Again, during the lead up to the release of the game, Frontier stated that they want the dinosaurs in the game to be authentic to their movie counterparts. So I am not expecting these dinosaurs to go bald for the sake of the game. I cannot wait to see what they will look like in their full glory, both in the film and in Jurassic World Evolution 2. The Quetzalcoatlus is going to have to undergo a bit of a makeover or make under, I should say, if it is going to be included in the game. I didn't even realize this while watching the trailer 30 times over myself, but the Gaming Beaver pointed out in a video just how massive it is in relation to the airplane. It looks like the Kets has been given the same oversized treatment as the Mosasaurus, and while I am not mad at that at all, it does pose a problem for the game, since it would be absolutely ridiculous to have this beast flying around in our aviaries. Which is why I would assume that the Kets gets shrunken back down to closer to its actual size to make it work in the game. And even then, the aviaries are going to feel quite small specifically feel a little too low, but it could still work that way. Now onto the remodels, which are potentially just as cool as the new models themselves. Rexy and Giga sport a bit of a different look in the film than they do in the game, or than they have in the past. Just like Return to Jurassic Park gave us more movie accurate models, so should a Dominion DLC. Most important of which is the remodel of the Giga, because the game's Giga is currently unrecognizable. Just as you select different skin options, you could select a different model. The T-Rex possibly coming with a feathered alternative is an opportunity for the game to take it one step further and introduce a feathered genome that can be applied to more species to give them a feathered look. This would not replace the existing skins, obviously it would be an addition. And that is just a little side note for all of those people who type, I don't want them to replace my dinosaurs with chickens. Every single time I mention feathers coming into the game, nobody's talking about replacing anything. Okay, stop typing. Stop it. You stop. Stop it right now. It would be an additional alternative that you can choose to ignore or choose to use. Whatever you want. This feather genome would not apply to all species. In fact, given the amount of work it would pose, it would only be applicable to a very small number of species. I don't even think it would be an option for the Velociraptor, for example, even though it is the obvious and popular choice. But they're basically already using the Pyroraptor as a backdoor way to get a feathered raptor into the franchise. Franchise. But possibly some of the flying reptiles and maybe Struthiomimus and Gallimimus and maybe even one of the other large theropods could have a feathered option. That is edging more into wishlist territory, although it's not too much to ask that a new DLC comes with a new mechanic, like the social genes from Secrets of Dr. Wu and the paleobotany from Claire's Sanctuary. What is possibly full on wishlist territory are baby dinosaurs. We have to talk about it, we, we have to. Baby dinosaurs have a place in the movie. Beta, Blue's Baby, is literally one of the most important plot devices of the film, I think. And we've also seen an image of a baby ceratopsian. I think it was a Nasutoceratops, although I can't quite remember. In either case, there will be baby dinosaurs in the film. And I think that means there is a very small possibility that a handful of species, seriously, just like only two to five, I'd guess, get a juvenile model in the game, which you can select similar to how you would select different skins and how you would select the alternate models that I mentioned earlier. Now, the reason the odds are very small is because 
Because one, baby dinosaurs were a part of Jurassic World in 2015 as well, and they never made it into the first game. There was also a baby Nasutoceratops in Battle of Big Rock, and again, didn't make an appearance in the game in, in either game. And two, leading up to the release of the game, Frontier kept reiterating that there would be no breeding, and they would be giving us the adult dinosaur experience. <laughs> Which sounds very wrong, and I regret everything in my life that has led me to this moment of saying that and thinking what I'm thinking right now. Anyway, no babies. Or in Frontier speak, no plans for babies. That, that was the word. That was all they ever said about it. But, you know, sometimes babies happen unplanned. Now, if it does happen, there would be no breeding mechanic for it. You'd literally just create a juvenile dinosaur the way you currently create adult dinosaurs. And the dinosaur would never grow up. You might say that's too unrealistic, but the game can just pretend that you would never be in a park long enough for that juvenile dinosaur to grow noticeably. And I think that's a reasonable point, at least when I look at my own playstyle. The reason I don't think that breeding and a growth mechanic is going to be part of it is just because of the amount of work and the amount of content that we're already guessing is going to be part of this DLC. Content that is more logical for them to add, you know, like the campaign editions, like the thing I'm going to talk about next like the dinosaurs those are all shoe-ins and that's already a big deal for a dlc which is why i think a breeding mechanic and a growth mechanic is just it's just beyond what we should expect so again i want to emphasize that even though i addressed it and i feel like we have to address it and even though i think there is a chance I consider it very unlikely. Now going from something most unlikely to something we basically know for sure we are getting, a Jurassic World Dominion Chaos Theory mode. There's a space for it in the menu and we'd need it to complete the set. There's really no argument here, we know this is happening. Again though, there is not much point in trying to figure out what the what-if scenario is going to be for a movie of which we don't even know the complete plot for sure. That would just be guesswork on top of guesswork. So what do you guys think? Did I miss anything? What do you think is going to be added to the DLC? I think if most of the stuff that I mentioned is part of the DLC, it is an absolutely massive addition to the game, which makes me very, very happy. So we have an exciting summer ahead of us that we're all going to spend inside in theaters watching Dominion over and over and at home at our PCs or on our consoles playing Jurassic World Evolution 2. If you enjoyed the video give it a like on your way out and if you did like it then maybe you should subscribe because there is much more of where this came from. For now thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time enjoy the game. Mm -hmm.